Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm making a video on my six favorite finesse baits when you just can't catch a fish for your life. I'm going to show you what I usually use. And these things I put a lot of work in, I've caught hundreds of fish on. These things I know catch fish. And I had a guy once tell me, when I was getting into fishing, I had a guy once tell me, hey, don't talk to me until you fish to these baits. Then if you can't catch a fish on it, come talk to me. So I'm going to show you some of the baits that I've learned over the years and some of the baits I have tons of confidence in and I will throw if I can't catch a fish for my life. Now, everyone's going to tell you to throw a Senko. Everyone's going to tell you to throw a drop shot. So I'm assuming you guys know that. You throw a Senko, throw a drop shot, throw, you know, that the basics. So I'm going to show you some things that are not the ordinary of what normal people are just going to tell you. I'm going to show you the slightly different things that I do that I'm that kind of makes me different from the rest. So, item number one. I'm going to go with a bait that I kind of discovered myself. Well, I mean, I didn't really discover it. I kind of, I was one of the first people to throw it in my current area. Um, so this is a number, uh, not number two, a two inch Kitek. This is in Shad. People might have been throwing this already, but uh, I was in a season where no one was throwing it. And I just tried it out. I'm like, you know what, that might catch fish. And sure enough, it did. I have a two inch Kitek in Shad. Another color would be good is the Silver Shiner. I don't believe they make Silver Shiner anymore. So I don't know if you can get it. Shad works great. Uh, blue, pearl, no. Pro Blue Red Pearl is another great color. That one, Small Mouth Magic. Those colors are the best. I usually try and go for the most reflective, the ones that have the flake that are just super, super reflective. And that usually works well. And what I do is I don't drop shot it. I don't Carolina rig it. I throw it on the Kitek 8 ounce jig head. Uh, so to be exact, it's the Tungsten Monoguard jig head. It is a size number two and it's 8 ounce. I will throw this out and it's actually really, really good before the bass spawn because the bass, they eat other bass sometimes. And they're looking for anything small when the fry are out and stuff like that. So if I'm throwing something like this on a jig head, they're going to eat it like crazy, especially like in the spring. I've had a ton of success in the spring and like the fall kind of time. Um, I mean, but pretty much it works all year. I've, I've thrown it in the winter and caught them pretty well. It's just it shines more than ever during like spring, summer, fall. Just like pretty much any other bait. But anyways... These things are great. Um, I usually throw it on a medium light rod. You can get away with a light, but I prefer a medium light. Uh, it's a seven foot medium light spinning. Um, I'll throw it on six pound test. I'll use a 12 pound braid to a six pound fluorocarbon leader. I like to use the Sunline Sniper. Uh, that one's just like one of my favorite fluorocarbons to use. But this is definitely one of my confidence baits that I've caught in tons of huge fish on and just tons of fish in general. So next bait. This one is a very, very finesse bait. Um, this company called C3 right here. This company, this the guy that brews it, the captain, he has a bunch of different baits that are super, super small. And the, the lakes that I fish, they like to eat smaller things. They don't really eat 10 inch stuff or like, unless it's like a big glide bait or something like that. But I think C3 baits is the king of finesse baits because Look at this, this is like a three inch bait. This is called the ice pick, and this one right here is called the shimmy. Um, the captain that runs C3, he can brew you these baits in any color you want. So oftentimes, I just get the standards, which is his Neptune Shad. This is like a smoky color with purple uh, and gold flake. This one says watermelon candy. It is a watermelon with green and purple and gold flake. This one racks, this one does so good. So. I love these baits and I love to throw them on a Carolina rig and a Carolina rig is a hugely popular bait but I like to throw it in a very very finessey style so what I'll do is I'll majority of my finesse stuff I throw it on 12 pound braid but I'll do a like for a Carolina rig at least I'll do 12 pound braid then I'll do 8 pound mono I like to go with uh, the Maxima ultra green 8 pound mono from the mono then I will go into using a Wu Tungsten no chip bullet weight. I'll usually go with like a 38 ounce weight. I like to go a little bit more heavier so I can cast it farther. But a Carolina rig, the beauty of it is when they pull the hook and the bait, the slide, the uh, flipping weight 
will usually just slide and they don't even feel that weight on it. So I'll go bullet weight, then I'll go bead, then I'll go swivel. From the swivel, then I'll go with a six pound fluorocarbon leader. From the six pound fluorocarbon leader, then I will go with a Gamagatsu size number two or number four EWG hook. It's a super tiny hook and it's a super thin wire hook. Now, these little three inch baits fit perfectly on a, for a size number two or size number four uh, EWG hook. It keeps it weightless. It's super finessey, the fish can't see the hook all that well, and all they know is they see this little tiny worm that looks that doesn't look intimidating at all. This is my finesse favorite, one of my finesse favorites right here. Um, but remember guys, if you hit up C3 baits, he can make you any color you want. I sometimes ask him for the stupidest colors just to see if they work. So Carolina rig, these things right here, I like to fish it on a medium light. My favorite setup for this technique is a Dobbins uh, seven foot, medium light rod and I have it paired with a Stella. Uh, it's the Dobbins, uh, Dobbins Champion and I pair it with a Stella, 2500 Stella. And the Stella, great, great reel for it. Um, I think it's a little overkill, but great reel. You can work with any small size spinning uh, reel. A size 1000 would work just fine. I usually have a 1000 on all my spinning setups unless it's a technique specific rod. So Carolina Rig, the Shimmy, uh, I'm sorry, the Shimmy, and the ice pick. Go hit up C3 baits, you can get that for you. Now, next one right here. This one is a Gary Yamamoto bait, but I feel like it's very underutilized. People know about it, but nobody really throws it all that much. I mean, there's a ton of people I bet that fish my lake that know it and don't really talk about it too much, but it is called the Yamamoto Ica. Um, this is one of those baits where a guy told me, don't talk to me until you threw like throwing this bait and if you can't get bit on it, then come talk to me because then you're fishing a lake that doesn't have any fish in it. Um, he's kind of right because the Ica right here, if you look at it, they are little, it's, think of it like a tube. Think of it like a tube or think of it like a Ned rig with a skirt. Um, it's a four inch bait, so it's a little bit bigger than a classic Ned rig, but it has that skirt at the top right here. That skirt is gonna play a big role in it. I usually get it in either green pumpkin or a green pumpkin, green and purple flake. You, you know, all, usually all the shades of green pumpkin or all the shades of watermelon work, um, but this is just one of my favorite colors. So, the Yamamoto Ica is great. You can flip it, you can uh, finesse it. I know guys that even drop shot with it. it it's, you can pretty much do anything with it. Um, but the beauty of a Yamamoto product is that it's filled with salt and they're heavy as it is. Uh, I like to throw my Icas with sometimes like just completely weightless or I'll put a bullet weight on it. Now, the specific hook that I use for this is either a EWG, like size number four EWG, but my favorite hook to use for this is the Owner Beast Hook. This is a stout hook. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah, this is a stout hook. It is huge. It's a four aught and it's the size medium on their packaging, but it's a stout hook. You need thicker line to put that hook through that fish's lip. So I usually fish this on nothing less than eight pound. Eight pound still really, really light for this style hook. 10 pound if you can get away with it and anything more than that, sure it'll work, but then the fish will start seeing the line. I usually use eight to 10 pound, works just fine. I've thrown it on a medium heavy and it punches this hook through the fish's lip like nothing. But pair this, these two, you will catch a fish. Um, the lakes that I fish are usually pretty pressured and this thing works just fine. It's just a little bit more of a fancier net rig if you think of it that way, or a little bit different of a technique of tube. Now, there is one key thing, one thing that I do that uh, not a lot of people will assume is that I rig these Icas backwards. Think of it this way, a tube, when you're working a tube, the tentacles are behind it and they're blowing like this. I want you to rig it like this, where the tentacles, these tentacles are in front. So the line is going like this. The tentacles are the first thing to hit that line. So when you work it, the tentacles are blowing back at the tube itself. It's not a tube, it's completely full, it's not hollow, but rig it upside down, rig it like, if you're letting it hang on your rod, it looks kind of like a palm tree. The nickname for this is the palm tree. Um, but try throwing this thing, it will catch you fish. I usually throw it on a medium heavy. A medium would probably work just fine. I like a medium heavy. And 
fish usually go nuts for it. So there's that. Moving on to our third bait. This one is, everyone knows about this. It's the Ned Rig. Um, but I have a couple different tech, a couple different things I do differently than the rest. Yeah, the typical Ned Rig is done with the Z-Man style where it's the uh, Elastec or whatever, something like that, and it lasts for a long time. Yes, it does, but I change it up a little bit. I use the C3 Baits Warthog. Now, the beauty about C3 Baits, again, you can customize in any color you want. Sometimes I ask the captain to brew me a color that is usual for a Ned Rig, but I have him brew me sometimes colors that are a little different. I've been catching him on a, like a customized color that I asked for. It's a brown with purple and gold flake. Yeah, purple and gold flake. And it catches him good. This one in particular is the, his purple rain. Um, this one would be good. I mean, it's kind of like clear water too. This Usually all the colors are pretty darn good, but Go natural if you can't figure out a color that you want. So, this right here, paired with a Wu Tungsten Ned Rig head. Let me see if I can zoom in on that, if it can cover, yeah, there we go. Wu Tungsten Ned Rig head. It's tungsten, which is awesome. So it's super sensitive, and not only that, it has a label. Let me see if I can get it on camera for you. Yeah, right there. It has a label on all their heads of what or how heavy the head is. So if you ever throw them in your toggle box and they get kind of scattered around and you're like, oh, I need one sixth, it will show you on the back of the jig head and you don't have to worry about it. Um, they come in black, green pumpkin, and brown. I love brown. Brown is like my green pumpkin. I will throw brown before green pumpkin any day. Um, and it has that super nice uh, bait keeper right there. And another great thing about this hook Z-Man doesn't do this, but Wu Tungsten has a Gamagatsu hook on it, so it is super sticky sharp. I never have a problem driving that hook through the fish's lip. Works every time. I've caught in smallmouth stripers, largemouth, everything on it. I caught a trout on it, actually, too. <laughs> it's weird, but I paired these two up, the C3 Baits Warthog with the Wu Tungsten Ned Rig, heg, Ned Rig, Ned Rig Head in 1-6. One thing I found is that anything lighter than one sixth, the fish will pick it up and walk away. They won't feel that weight. They'll, they'll think it's natural and they won't drop it. Anything heavier than that, I've noticed that fish will pick it up and they'll drop it after like three seconds because they think it's too heavy and there's something wrong about it, so they just drop it. At one sixth or lighter, the fish will not be able to tell that it is foreign and they'll usually put it in their mouth and walk away with it. So. This is my pairing, Ned Rig, Warthog, the C3 Baits Warthog with a Wu Tungsten Ned Rig, a Tungsten Ned Rig head. Oh, that's so hard to say. Ned Rig head in one sixth brown. Um, I usually fish this on a medium light rod and I use six pound test all around. Um, the beauty, well, not the beauty, the way I work this thing, I will cast it out and I will start it out in inches of water. I'll start it out in like, sometimes I'll hit the shoreline, not even in the water yet, and I'll slowly work it in. The Ned Rig, you have, the, the way you work it is you want it to stand up on its own. A lot of like Z-Man products are, you know, the plastic is buoyant, um, but this Ned Rig head is so flat, feel like it's super flat and super wide, so it forces that plastic on the back to stand up straight when you work it right. So I'll start it off on the shoreline, I'll start working it back. And when I work it back, I do short little hops or a slow pull. A big problem is people will treat finesse fishing techniques like power fishing and they'll just pump it or they'll rip it and they'll like work it super fast. These techniques that I'm showing here are meant to be fished pretty darn slow. Or at least if you're having a tough bite, you wanna work it slower. So when I cast it out there, I let it hit the bottom. Then I'll give it like a couple twitches and kill it for a couple seconds. And one thing I've noticed majority of the time is all these baits that I'm showing you here, they don't hit it when it's moving. They hit it when it's motionless. That's the key. So when I'm casting out there, I know I'm not getting bit when I'm working it, but right when I stop, that's when I tighten my line to it, get good contact with that bait and just wait for that thump. And usually they pick it up pretty well, but there are times where they'll pick it up like this and they'll just barely walk away with it. Or sometimes they'll pick it up and not even move. They'll just hold it in their mouth. And that's the times when I'll start pulling it. Ah, there's a little pressure, hook set, and there he is. 
So you want to work it really slow and give that time of motionless all the time that it needs for a fish to pick it up. I forget what Pro Angler told me this. Uh, Pro Angler once said, uh, imagine a fish is looking at it, like eyeing it, is nosing, like it's nose down on it, staring at it. Imagine a fish is doing that every single second that bait's in the water. And you will fish your lures and baits completely different when you have that mentality. I see a lot of guys, they'll cast it out and they'll work it, work it, work it until they get to a spot where they feel like the, a fish would be. Then they'll let it sit and they'll work it for a little bit. Right when they're out of that zone, they just reel it back up. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten bit in inches of water or right before I'm about to reel it up, I get a hit. So imagine a fish is looking at it every single second that bait's in the water. And I learned that technique on the Ned Rig. Um, it is a, it's like super, super popular now, but you can make it as complicated or as simple as you want. If you want to make it super simple, just go get any old Ned Rig at the store, any old head, cast it out, you'll probably catch a fish. But if you want to make it a little bit more specific and have a better chance of matching your hatch or matching the lake and matching all your gear, this is a way to go. This is my favorite way to go. Um, so again, C3 baits, completely customizable. He can brew you any color that you want with any kind of flake you want. I get the basics, I get slightly different, and I also get obnoxious kind of colors. I asked him for like a bright blue Ned Rig one time, and uh, I have yet to fish it, but I, I end up throwing other colors, but he can brew you those types of colors, and that's the beauty of C3 baits. Also, once again, Wu Tungsten Ned Rig head in one sixth ounce, and it has a Gamagatsu hook. Work it really slow, use a medium light rod, six pound test. You can't really go wrong. You're bound to catch one. So that is another finesse bait. Now, these two last baits, they're gonna be baits that you've heard of before. But the reason why I'm telling you these is because these are slight differences that everyone else throws. Slight differences that I think make it worth your while. Now, everyone's heard of Robo Worm. And you're probably thinking, oh gosh, he's gonna show me a green pumpkin four and a half inch worm. It's not what I'm gonna do. Here is a Robo Worm that I have grown up fishing. This was like my first ever, actually this is my first ever confidence bait right here. This is Robo Worm four and a half inch straight tail worm. But the key that I want you to do or get is the bait ball color. Bait ball. If you look closely, this is gonna be kind of hard to see, but it has reflective flakes like a chromish like color reflective flake, like a silver flake, but it is clear top with a purple base to it. A lot of people throw the hologram shad robo worm to match a bait fish. And a lot of people know the color MM3 or Margarita Mutilator. Margarita Mutilator is like the standard for finesse fishing. A six inch Margarita Mutilator or MM3, the purple worm, everyone has a purple worm on their boat. But here's the thing, this is why this is slightly different. This is, I like to call it a mixture of hologram shad and MM3 or Margarita Mutilator because it's purple, but it's clear with reflective chromish colored flake, silver flake. My first ever confidence bait, I'm gonna tell you to rig this any way you want. I started out drop shotting it, um, but I have gone, I've done pretty well in tournaments just Texas rigging it, putting a bullet weight in front of it. Um, it depends on where you're fishing it. If you're fishing a lot of open water, if you're fishing a lot of water that doesn't have a lot of weeds, brush, and stuff like that, I'd suggest drop shotting it on like a size number two or like number four mosquito light hook, super light hook. All, like there's a lot of guys in like, you know, different parts of the country that are just like, a fish will bend that hook out. The way I like to fish is ultra finesse. I will throw it on a light rod, a seven foot Dobbins, uh, yeah, Dobbins Champion Light Rod, and I'll use six pound to four pound test line. Ultra finesse. I don't want that fish to even think that there's a line connected to this thing. With a four, uh, number two or number four uh, mosquito light hook, and I'll use a, uh, a quarter ounce drop shot weight. I will rig that up, I'll cast that out, and I will work it super, super slow back. And when I work it super slow back, I do little pops and let it sit. Remember, a lot of these finesse baits, the fish aren't gonna hit it when it's moving, they're gonna hit it when it's motionless or barely falling. The beauty of the drop shot is to keep it elevated off the bottom a little bit. I've noticed that they either bite it when it's on the fall from the drop shot or it's laying on the ground. Everyone thinks 
that drop shots are gonna constantly keep that bait elevated. That's absolutely not true. Think of it this way, when you're casting it out, you fire it out there, and you're dragging it back, that line is at an angle like this to the water. There's no way that bait's gonna be straight up in the water. It's gonna be at an angle like this. It's gonna be dragging on the bottom, and the fish are usually picking it up when it's dragging on the bottom. That drop shot's not gonna actually keep it off the bottom unless you're vertical fishing it. So think of it that way. Um, I like to do it on a drop shot, it still works. Uh, that's everyone's confidence bait, but one of, also another way I like fishing this bait is on a Texas rig. Roboworm, I believe it's Roboworm that makes this style hook. It's called the rebarb hook. I like to get it in a size number two uh, straight shank hook. It has a nice bait keeper on it, and it's plenty sharp. It's super light wire. They make multiple thicknesses of wire. They make a medium wire and a light wire. I always go for the light wire whenever I can. Now, a lot of people are thinking, oh, you're totally going to bend out that hook. Okay, here's the thing. If you're fishing six to four pound test, you wanna set that drag really, really light. You wanna pull that line and have it come out pretty darn easily. So that won't bend out your hook. You want it strong enough to where it'll pierce that hook through, but since it's so thin, it barely doesn't take anything. Some people just reel up on it and that hook's already through that fish's lip. So when you do that, you let that fish run and do whatever you, it wants because you're fishing four to six pound test. So you shouldn't bend out your hook. If you're bending out your hook, your drag is way too tight. Um, I will Texas rig it on a straight shank hook. I'll put a 3 16 ounce or less bullet weight on the front. I like to use the Wu Tungsten no chip flipping weight and I'll put that on the front. So remember this guys, 3 16 personally, it, it, I'm, you know, my leg could be completely different than your guys's, but personally, I think 3 16 is the heaviest you can go before that fish is going to pick it up and just walk away with it. Any heavier than that, like quarter ounce, I start seeing fish pick it up and they'll just drop it because they're like, ah, it's a little too heavy, it doesn't feel right, so they'll drop it. So 3 16 I've noticed a lot of fish will just pick it up and walk away with it because it's just light enough where they don't feel it, but heavy enough where you can keep good contact with that bait. All these baits right here, another tip, all these baits, you wanna practice good contact with your bait. I see way too many times someone's gonna cast it out once it hits the bottom, they engage their reel and they hold it and that line goes down and it just squiggles all on the surface and then it gets to your bait. You're not gonna feel the slightest tap on that bait. When that line is so coiled up and so just like making loops on the water if you're fishing straight fluorocarbon or mono, you're not gonna feel anything. I don't care how sensitive your rod is. You're not gonna feel it. You're usually gonna see your line move or twitch. I don't want you to do that. I want you when you cast it out, right when you know that that bait's on the bottom, I want you to reel up to where your line has a gradual bend to the uh, to the bait, where all you have to do is move it a couple inches, then your line's super tight, and then you're actually moving the bait. If you keep that practice, then that makes your expensive, sensitive rod worth your while. And if you want to go the next step, I suggest using braid. All of my rods have braid. I've literally, like literally every single rod, I have braid on it. The only time I won't fish straight braid is maybe if I'm cranking. But still, I usually try and go braid, then a really long mono leader. But braid has no stretch. It will make everything way more sensitive. If you have a really nice, expensive, or you know the best rod you can get, most sensitive rod you can get, paired with braid, and you keep good contact with that bait, you're going to feel baits so much more clearly and it's gonna make fishing so much more fun. So guys, once again, this is the Robo Worm four and a half inch straight tail worm in bait ball. Remember, it's bait ball. Another, like a couple other great colors that I throw, of course, it's the Margarita Mutilator, of course, it's the Aaron's Magic, of course, it's the Morning Dawn, and Green Pumpkin. Usually green, any shade of green works. I like to be more reflective, I like, if I can have a Green Pumpkin with some sort of red flake or just something that reflects light, I would usually go for that. If I can't find it, any shade of green will work. Pretty much any Robo Worm will work if you think about it, but there's a couple colors that I truly believe give you a little bit more of an advantage. So, that is Robo Worm off to our last bait here. So, this bait, you're gonna be like, oh, come on, I've already heard of this. It's a Yamamoto Sanko, but, but it's not like any other Yamamoto Sanko. This Sanko is one that I think is very underutilized. People know about it, but they don't really know about it. This is the 
Yamamoto Sanko 5 inch Sanko, but this is the thin Sanko. It's thinner. Look at that. It's a very, very thin Sanko. That is the biggest difference here. Five inches just thinner. It works completely different. I've had days where I will throw a standard five inch Senko. It's the standard size. And yeah, I might get a couple fish, but when I throw this, I can tell you I've had times where I had over 30 fish in three hours. Like it's just, it just gets them so good. But I would say it really works in waters that are like, there's a lot of bait fish, um, especially when there's dying bait fish. If you throw this into a school of shad, usually there's a couple shad that are slowly dying. This will look like a dying shad, barely fluttering through the water. Now, one of the things that I've seen is if you throw a four inch Senko, like the, the fatter, normal standard size four inch Senko, it doesn't wobble all that much. It usually just goes straight down. This one has a very vivid wobble. Um, I've made a Senko test in another video. I'll link it down below, but this Senko, I can't tell you how many fish I've caught on this thing. It is such a workhorse bait for me. It's such a confidence bait for me. It works all the time. Now, I wanna give a big shout out to Rusty. Uh, he is a guide that is out here in California and he's the one that taught me this a long time ago. But, so here's another thing. The Yamamoto Thin Senko, this is in natural shad. Now remember, it has to be in natural shad. The other colors do work, but the thing that I, the color that I've had the most success with, I've thrown all the colors. The color that I've had the most success with is the natural shad. It just makes it look like a natural shad. So, there's another tip for this bait. If you get to the lake before the sun has like completely been exposed to the water, like the sun is still behind the mountains or still hasn't, like come out just yet there's still ambient light in, uh, in the sky i want you to throw this color right here this is the smoke with black and purple flake this color i will throw before the sun comes out or if it's overcast or gray light or when the sun's going down i will throw this color this color works so much better than this color um when the sun's not out yet or when it's gray light right when that sun peaks above the mountain or uh, comes over the horizon, I want you to switch to natural shad. I've seen a clear difference in that. So remember guys, it is the natural shad and the purple, black, and smoke, uh, pur purple, black flake, smoke color, <laughs> I guess. Um, a lot of the Sankos catch fish, all the Sanko colors catch fish. It's just to be more particular, it's the thin Sanko. So the hardware that I use for it, I will always throw it weightless and I will throw it wacky style. Um, if you want, you know, if you ask me, am I a wacky style or Texas style kind of person, I'm always gonna throw it wacky. Um, there's a time and a place for Texas rig, and I will only throw Texas rig when it's like, there's a lot of brush, there's a lot of weeds or slime or whatever it is, I will throw a Texas rig. But I never ever throw a Texas rig if I don't have that kind of stuff. I will throw a wacky, wacky rig. Um, the, Things I will do for this, a lot of people put like a little ring around it or they'll use a special hook. The thing I use is the, I believe it's called the G7. Uh, the G7 is like a clear tube that you can find and it's super lightweight, it's clear, you can put the hook right through it and it keeps your hook really well on that thing. Or I will use the Wacky Saddle. The Wacky Saddle, what's great about it, comes in two sizes. There's a standard size that will fit a standard Senko, but they make a smaller size that fits perfectly. It's odd, it's so weird how perfectly it fits on the natural shad thin Senko. I usually use that. I put a Gamagatsu size number one finesse wide gap hook. I will put that on my Senko and I will throw it on six pound test on a medium light rod. Medium light is like my workhorse rod. I use Dobbins Extremes, I use the Zodiuses, like you don't need the super high end rods for it. Yes, the better the rod, the better, you know, more sensitive it's gonna be. I use a Zodius or I use a Champion, uh, Dobbins Champion. Those work great for me. Cast this out. I like to work it like all my finesse baits. I'll start it off in the shallow and I'll start working it back. I've noticed they will bite this bait on the fall a lot. They'll bite it when it's just fluttering down. So Rusty taught me how to throw this thing. What I usually do is when I cast it out, 
it's going to hit the water and it's going to start fluttering down. Now, I don't keep close contact with that bait when it's fluttering down because if I do keep close contact, keep that line tight, it's not going to fall straight down. It's going to fall at an angle where my boat is. I don't want that. I want it to fall straight down. So I'll give it a lot of line out. I'll let it sink and I'll just watch that line. I even have a rod rigged with high vis yellow braid just so I can see it better on the water. You don't have to do that. I, I've caught the majority of my fish without using the high vis yellow. But anyways, I'll throw it out like that and I'll let it flutter all the way down. Once it hits the bottom, I'll let it sit for two seconds. After it sits for two seconds, nothing bites it. I'll give it one, uh, I'm sorry, two pops up. So one, two. So it jumped off the bottom, maybe like three feet. Then I'll let it flutter back down again. Wait two seconds. After two seconds, I just reel it back up. I've noticed the majority of the time it bites it on the fall or when it's just hit, when it like just hit the bottom. So you gave it two chances to fall, two chances to sit on the bottom. If there's not a fish wanting it, it's probably not going to bite it again. So that is the Yamamoto Thin Senko. And that is my, one of my favorite finesse baits right there. Now, all in all with these finesse baits, these are baits that I've had personal success with. I don't know if they're going to work well on your lake, but I can guarantee you at least three of them will. Um, all these baits, they're very, very tiny. I love throwing tiny finesse baits. Everyone thinks that you need to throw a six inch. Everyone like you don't need to throw these giant worms. Bass have eyes like a hawk. If you're fishing clear water, they will see for like 15 feet. They will. I've seen fish come so far just for a little tiny bait. Um, but if you're fishing a little more muddy or a little bit more stained water, I would suggest matching the color to your water clarity. Absolutely. Um, go with like a darker color, go with a brighter color, but I like to stay really, really small. Like if I hit four inches, four inches is like the max size I'll go. Like four and a half inch robo worm, that's like, I won't go to the six inch all that often. I usually stay at the four and a half. Um, I like fishing those two to three inch baits. They just get bit so well and it's such a night and day difference. So guys, down below, I'm gonna type in all the baits that we talked about today and the colors that I've had a lot of success with. I want you guys to go try them and please catch some fish on it. Please give them some time. The way I learned these baits is just dedicating some time to them to catch me some fish. And if you have a day where you just can't buy a bite, you have a lot of time to dedicate for these baits. So don't be afraid to get, uh, you know, spend some time on these baits because I guarantee you they will catch you fish. And if they don't catch a fish, I don't know if there's any fish in your lake. <laughs> so guys, I'm gonna be posting a lot more videos on just tips. I'm gonna be taking videos on my trips and I'm going to be showing you guys all the baits that I throw and the reasons why I throw them and how I throw them. So guys, stay tuned for those and I will catch you guys later. Peace.